Welcome to DevOps interview preparation part 10. It, if you're watching this video for the first time, then I would like to let you know that there are nine other videos that have prepared with respect to DevOps interview preparation, okay? And if you are someone who wants to prepare for mock interviews with me, then reach me out. You can find the details in the description. Before I start today's session, I would also like to let you know that I have just launched my course in Udemy called as 50 DevOps Interview Question and Answers 2022. You can find the link in the description for the Udemy course and purchase it if you are interested. I have covered 50 unique questions that can appear in the DevOps interview. Not only that, I have also shared how to answer them in the interview. Last but not the least, if you would like to speak to me, then book the 30 minutes free DevOps discussion session. And again, the link is in the description. Let us see the first question that can appear in the DevOps interview. And the question is, what is an SSL certificate? What is a SSL certificate? If you are studied AWS in your uh, training or any cloud for that matter, then I am pretty much sure you would have come across the word SSL certificate. So what is a SSL certificate? Let us try to understand that and later get the answer for that and in the interview, okay? So what is SSL certificate and why do we need it? We will take an example here. Let us say we have a user and this user is using a website. If this user wants to use this website, he might be asked to log in, correct? He might be requested to log in. He might be requested to uh, share his username and password. When he enters this username and password, what actually happens? This goes to our application server, then goes to our database. It validates the username and password. That is the next step. And then the end user will be able to access the website. This is the standard process that is available. One key important thing is from the website to the application server, that is this particular path you are seeing, this happens via the network. This can be public internet, private internet, whatsoever. And here is where our hackers, people who want to steal your information may be they might end up sniffing in the information and they might get your username and password. Now you might be wondering, Raghu, how is it even possible? It should not be possible, right? It has to be secure a line of connection. If you have watched any movies, you would have heard that, let us say there is a James Bond, right? And he has a phone. When he calls someone from this particular mobile phone, this happens via secure network. So what is the secure network? Can't it be hacked? Not really, but there is a way in which you can encrypt the information that you're sending and then decrypt it at the end during this process, it is completely encrypted. Nobody can get this information. Even if they get this information, let us say, even if the hackers get this information, they cannot decode this information. That is the idea. But how can we achieve this particular scenario? This is where SSL comes into picture, fine? So let us see some details around SSL now. Now, SSL basically stands for, sorry, I think my audio is broken. Yeah, so SSL basically stands for secure connection and it is done by attaching a certificate. This certificate is authorized certificate and using this authorized certificate, whenever you make a connection, the detail is passed on to my applications, uh, application server via secure connection. 
And this is going to help us to make sure all username and password are properly encrypted. Okay, so how do you answer this question? SSL certificates are basically needed to make sure that our traffic from the public internet and to our application server is having a proper encryption enabled. If there is no proper encryption enabled, there is a very high chance that the information that we have entered, like username and password on our website, will be easily available to hackers and they can use it very easily. To avoid this, we need to encrypt and make sure we create a secure connection and hence SSL certificates are used. If you are interested to know more about SSL certificates, how it works, how it works with AWS, etc., you can also request me access to my AWS deep bio session and we can discuss it. But anyway, let us continue to our next question now. The next question is a very, very fundamental question in my opinion, and it should be very easy for anyone to answer. The question is, why are folders in Linux called directories? Okay, so why are they not called folders? If you are using a Windows laptop, you might see that there are some folders. We call them folders, no? We have a music folders, we have a video folder, etc. These are called as folders, but in Linux, these are called as dictionaries, oh, sorry, directories. Why are they called as directories and not folders? Maybe you can say that it is just a choice of the word that have been used. And that is perfectly the correct answer if you are saying if it is a choice of word that has been used. But there is a little bit more to add here. In terms of the English word folder and directories, there is a small difference. That is, if you have a directory, let us say, and if you have some small files here, the difference here is the directory keeps a meta information. It keeps a meta information of the files in a place. If you access this metadata, you can access all the related file information. This makes a retrieval of files much faster. This also makes storing of your files much faster. Hence, these have a special use case on our Linux server because in the Linux server, we have a lot of folders getting created and moved around. And hence having this meta information stored in a place will play a very important role. And that is what is the reason why we also call it as directories. I hope it is clear for you. If it is asked in the interview, this is how you can answer. On a high level, I would say it is a choice of words, but at the same time, directories have a, one of the special feature that is they store the meta information of the files that are present inside the directories. Meaning if you want to quickly access the files in the directories, let us say there are hundred files in the directories, it could be a bit faster in the Linux directory file system because it can access the meta information and using this meta information, you can know the location of the file pretty quickly. This is how you can try to answer this particular question in the interview. Well, that is it for this video, my friends. If you have any questions in your mind, and if you want me to create those videos, don't forget to leave them in the comment section. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There will be two to three videos coming every week on different DevOps technologies. And by just following this channel, I'm pretty much sure you'll be able to understand a lot more about DevOps. That is it for this session. Speak to you in the next session. Till then, take care and bye-bye.